What's up, Sushi Squad? We back in some more Genshin Impact, and today we're going to be talking about the new four-star character, Kuki, which is going to end up coming with the next wave of, uh, well, the next update, actually. Uh, so the update ended up basically getting delayed because there was another outbreak in China and so on and so forth. And uh, as far as I've heard, this update is going to end up taking place uh, on the 31st of this month. Now, if you are going for Kuki, you are going to have to wait quite a while. You're going to have to wait the three weeks on, on top of waiting now until the update. And then when the update hits, uh, Kuki is actually going to end up being in the second phase of banners. So the first banners are going to end up being Yelan and Xiao. Uh, and then there's going to end up being an Ito rerun. And Kuki's going to end up being in that banner because she's part of the Arataki Ito gang. Now, for those of you that just want the quick information, there it is. There's the Ascension card. There will be a download link in the description so you guys can just grab this and go if you want to. Uh, but otherwise, for those of you that don't know anything about Kuki and want to end up seeing what her abilities are and so on and so forth, you can stay tuned. The role of Kuki is most of all going to end up being a support because she kind of is going to end up being a very, very weird healer as we'll end up exploring with uh, the actual like abilities and so on speaking of which let's get into her uh elemental skill or her e ability right now so sanctifying ring creates a grass ring of sanctification at the cost of part of her hp dealing electro damage to nearby opponents grass ring of sanctification also has the following effects so it will follow your current active character around Deal, uh, dealing electro damage to nearby opponents every 1.5 seconds and restoring HP for the active character or active characters within the ring's area of effect based on Kuki's max HP. So I guess uh, if you're playing in multiplayer, basically you would be able to end up healing yourself as well as some friends. Uh, the HP consumption from using this skill will only bring her to 20% HP yikes that's that's pretty brutal dude i guess it can't end up uh bringing her hp lower than 20 though so you would be basically cast the ability swap off of her uh, swap back to her cast the ability and she would still just be super duper vulnerable i don't know that's just a very strange style of play uh for a character uh, anyways, moving on to her ultimate ability which is the kariyama right so stabs an evil Exoriating blade into the ground. I hope I pronounced that right. Creating a field that cleanses the area of all that is foul. So I guess it's an exorcism of sorts. Dealing continuous electro damage to opponents within its area of effect based on her HP. Once again, so she is a max HP all the way kind of gal. Uh, if Shinobu's or Kuki's uh, HP is less than or equal to 50% when this skill is used, the field will last longer. So you'd use her E, you'd use her ult, and then you want to keep her at low HP so that this ends up actually causing even more damage while out on the field. Uh, the um, ability is going to end up dealing a certain amount of damage based on her max HP, which uh, anyways, I'll try to remember to end up including the numbers here. Uh, you know, these could be not 100% accurate. It's just from Honey Impact, so whatever uh we're already moving on to her passive talents i mean it's a four star character so obviously it's not going to end up being like super crazy exciting or anything like that in terms of her abilities but either way i still just really like her character design uh so she gains 25 percent more rewards when dispatched in the inazuma region uh she also has breaking free when shinobu or kuki's uh, hp is not higher than 50 percent her healing bonus is increased by 15 percent so once again you want to actually keep her health really really low which is a really risky style of play especially when you're in world level eight and almost all the enemies would end up one-shotting you if you're at 20 percent hp especially a character like that but Okay, whatever. Anyways, uh, then there's going to end up being her other passive, which is Sanctifying Ring's abilities will be boosted based on her elemental mastery. Ooh, so you build her towards HP and elemental mastery, it seems. So the Sanctifying Ring, again, is going to end up being her E ability. So the uh, healing amount will be increased by 75% of your elemental mastery. So I guess if you want to build her as support, you would be most of all investing her into elemental mastery rather than HP just because of the way that it scales. Uh, damage dealt is increased by 25% of the elemental mastery. Again, I, I think that... Uh, pretty crazy that she scales so well off elemental mastery. That's actually pretty weird. 
<laughs> Very strange character, HP and Elemental Mastery. Go figure, huh? Uh, so anyways, let's move on to her constellation. So her C1 makes it so that her ultimate ability's area of effect is increased by 50%, which is pretty crazy. Her C2 makes it so that the Grass Ring of Sanctification duration is increased by three seconds, which uh, again is going to end up being her E ability. So uh, cool, it just lasts even longer, probably lasts until cooldown is done actually, which is pretty crazy. Uh, and then her C3 makes it so that her E ability gains three additional levels. Her C4 makes it so that when the normal charged or plunging attacks of the character affected by the E ability or the sanctifying ring uh, hits opponents, a Thundergrass mark will land on the opponent's position and deal area of effect electro damage based on 9.7% of Shinobu's max HP. This effect can only occur every five seconds. So it's just extra damage basically uh you just have her e on you tag an enemy and then it'll end up dealing some extra damage based on her max hp c5 is going to end up making her ultimate gain three more levels uh and then her c6 makes it so that when kuki uh takes lethal damage so when she dies basically uh this instance of damage will not knock her down so very similar to uh hu tao actually uh, this effect will automatically trigger when her HP reaches 1 and will trigger once every 60 seconds. So when Shinobu's HP drops below 25%, she will gain 150 Elemental Mastery for 15 seconds, and this effect will occur once every 60 seconds. So, brutal C6 for a, a 4-star character, honestly speaking. That's actually pretty darn cool. Uh, that kind of completely changes her kit, which, personally speaking... I, I feel like we've had that, uh, like, we've had uh, constellations that completely change the way that a character is played um, a little bit too, uh, like, not, not often enough lately. Like, I, I think that a lot of the characters have been very safe where constellations are just do more damage, right? But in this case, it is still do more damage, but at least it kind of has the automatic resurrection uh, similar to Hu Tao, which, I mean, hey, that's cool. So as far as stats are concerned, basically you end up building her towards HP and Elemental Mastery, uh, depending on whether or not you want to play her as a full support, which obviously is her des designated role, or use her as a damage character, you would end up using either crit damage or crit rate swords, uh, either that or something that ends up giving healing or HP or whatever, you know, it, it, you can't really go wrong with too many of the different weapons and a lot of the four star craftables are going to end up being absolutely fine. Uh, one thing that I do want to mention, which I think is really, really really awesome that's coming in the next update is uh based on the most popular build of certain characters uh the game will actually take statistics based on the majority and it will show you while you're selecting equipment for this character what is the top recommended build kind of makes these types of uh, stat tutorials obsolete but that doesn't mean that we're still not going to end up talking about because obviously Kuki's not even in the game right now. But anyways, moving on to the artifacts set. So she is going to end up being an Electro character, which means that you would probably end up using the Electro set, uh, either using the same set they would use on Raiden just because of the elemental uh, or energy recharge. I don't know. That's okay. It's not great. Uh, generally speaking, I would probably recommend using the... Whoa, I don't have the proper electro set on razor okay well here it is right here anyways you could either having uh have uh, a set focused on electro if you want to end up having that extra damage or you could end up having a healing set uh generally speaking how i would build her is probably just using the uh healing set i don't know that's that's just me yeah anyways uh as far as the artifacts st uh, stats that you want to end up going for there's a couple different options generally speaking you would probably end up going for the usual crit damage and crit rate are always going to end up being a priority but generally speaking uh, i'd say that you go for hp and elemental mastery as your kind of main top priority i'm just on hu tao just because of how i have her set up right the thing is depending on again how you want to end up having her built uh, you could end up having Elemental Mastery on the Sands, or you could go for HP. It's entirely up to you. And then once again, for the Goblet, you could either end up having electric uh, Electro Damage or Elemental Mastery or HP. Uh, it really depends. Honestly, I would probably end up having 
probably end up having both maybe elemental mastery and hp and then the crown would end up being slightly different either uh, it would end up being crit rate uh crit damage healing attack percentage might work good on her now as far as how you would end up leveling up her talents personally i i mean i would probably end up leveling up her ultimate just because it seems like it's going to end up being the top priority in terms of using her as a support character but her e ability would be something that i would equally try to level up rather than even bothering with her base attack which her base attack obviously would be more so if you're going to actually use her for dealing damage and swapping her in and out of the party and so on and so forth and want her to actually contribute to the group rather than just using her for her elemental uh, skill and burst but as far as I'm concerned, those would be the two top priorities for me is just her skill and her burst uh, in either order. It doesn't really matter. It depends which one would end up being more viable for your build. I guess generally speaking, I would lean more towards... Uh, I know I said her ult, but I would lean more towards her E just because that's going to constantly be tagging enemies with electro damage, which is going to be great for reactions rather than her ultimate, which is equally going to do that, but it doesn't follow your character around. Uh, the ultimate ability is going to end up being quite static and uh, the E ability is going to end up lasting a lot longer. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but anyways, that's uh, pretty much going to end up covering it as far as I as far as I'm concerned. Um, uh, hopefully, you end up finding this video helpful. And if you did, smash like so for more. By the merch, you want to support the channel and have yourselves a wonderful day, ladies and gentlemen.